യാദൃശ്യമായി ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന ഒരു കണ്ടെത്തൽ ഒരാളുടെ ജീവിതത്തെ മുഴുവൻ മാറ്റി മറിക്കുന്ന ഇതിൻ്റെ ഒരു ഉദാഹരണമാണ് സാവിത്രി പ്രീത നായർ രണ്ടായിരത്തി രണ്ടിൽ ലണ്ടനിലെ നാച്ചുറൽ ഹിസ്റ്ററി മ്യൂസിയത്തിൽ ഉള്ള ക വെച്ചുണ്ടായ ഒരു കണ്ടെത്തലിലൂടെ ഉണ്ടായത് അവിടെ സ്വന്തം ഗവേഷണത്തിൻ്റെ വിവര ശേഖരണാർത്ഥം പോയ സമയത്ത് വളരെ യാദൃശ്ചികമായി വളരെ അലക്ഷ്യമായി മേശപ്പുറത്ത് കിടന്നിരുന്ന ഒരു പുസ്തകം കണ്ണിൽ പെട്ടു അത് വെറുതെ മറിച്ച് നോക്കിയപ്പോൾ അത് യൂജനിക് സൊസൈറ്റിയിലെ അംഗങ്ങളുടെ വിവരണങ്ങളായിരുന്നു അതിൽ എച്ച് ജി വെൽസ് ഹാവ്ലോക്കില്ലിസ് ജെ ബി എസ് ഹാൽഡെയിൻ ഇങ്ങനെ തുടങ്ങിയിട്ടുള്ള മഹാരഥന്മാരായിട്ടുള്ള ശാസ്ത്രന്മാരുടെ പേരിൻ്റെ കൂട്ടത്തിൽ ഇ കെ ജാനകിയമ്മ എന്നൊരു പേര് ജാനകിയമ്മ എന്നുള്ളൊരു പേര് കാണുകയുണ്ടായത് അപ്പോൾ ഇത് അതൊരു ഇന്ത്യക്കാരൻ അതും ഒരു കേരളീയ വനിത അതും ഒരു സ്ത്രീ അത് പെട്ടെന്ന് ഇതാര് എന്നുള്ള ഒരു അതിശയത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ആ ഒരു ആകാംക്ഷയിൽ നിന്ന് ആണ് ഈ ഇന്ന് ഈ പുസ്തകത്തിൻ്റെ ആരംഭം അവരുടെ ജീവിതം അന്വേഷിച്ച് ഒരുപാട് അലയേണ്ടി വന്ന ഒരു സാഹചര്യമാണ് പിന്നീടുണ്ടായത് കാരണം സാവിത്രി പ്രീത നായർ എന്ന വ്യക്തിയുടെ ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് വളരെ വിപുലമാണ് വളരെ വൈവിധ്യമുള്ളതാണ് അത് സാമ്പത്തിക ശാസ്ത്രം മുതൽ സാമൂഹ്യ ശാസ്ത്രം മുതൽ കലാപ്രവർത്തനങ്ങൾ മുതൽ മ്യൂസിയം സംബന്ധമായ പഠനങ്ങൾ മുതൽ ശാസ്ത്രത്തിൻ്റെ ആവിർഭാവവും അതിൻ്റെ വികാസവും സംബന്ധിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള ഗവേഷണ പഠനങ്ങൾ മുതൽ ഇങ്ങനെ വ്യാപിച്ച് കിടക്കുന്നതാണ് ഈ ഒരു കാഴ്ചപ്പാടിൽ നിന്ന് നോക്കി നോക്കിയാണ് വളരെ പെട്ടെന്ന് ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ളൊരു ജീവിതത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് അവരറിയുന്നത് അതേക്കുറിച്ച് ഒരുപാട് അന്വേഷണങ്ങൾ ആരംഭിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ഈ മ്യൂസിയം സംബന്ധിച്ച പഠനങ്ങളുടെ ഒരു പശ്ചാത്തലം ഇതിന് ആഴത്തിൽ ഈ മുന്നോട്ട് പോകാൻ സഹായകരമായിട്ടുണ്ട് അവർ ജനിച്ച് നൂറ്റി ഇരുപത്തഞ്ച് വർഷം തികയുന്ന രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി രണ്ടിൽ അതായത് യാദൃശ്ചികമായ കണ്ടെത്തലിൻ്റെ ഇരുപത് വർഷത്തിന് ശേഷം ഈ പുസ്തകം പുറത്തിറങ്ങുമ്പോൾ അത് വലിയൊരു സാഫല്യമാണ് വലിയ ഒരു ഒരു ആശ്വാസമാണ് അവരെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ഈ ഒരു പുസ്തകം വെറുമൊരു വ്യക്തിയുടെ ജീവചരിത്രം മാത്രമല്ല ഒരു കാലഘട്ടത്തിൻ്റെ അടയാളപ്പെടുത്തൽ കൂടിയാണ് അതൊരു രാജ്യത്തെ മാത്രമല്ല ദേശത്തിൻ്റെയും കാലങ്ങളുടെയും അതിരുകളെ മുഴുവൻ ഉല്ലംഘിക്കുന്ന മറികടക്കുന്ന ലോകത്തെമ്പാടും ആ കാലഘട്ടങ്ങളിൽ ഉണ്ടായിട്ടുള്ള ശാസ്ത്ര പുരോഗതിയെയും ശാസ്ത്ര പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ബയോളജിക്കൽ സയൻസസിൽ ഉണ്ടായിട്ടുള്ള വികാസ പരിണാമങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാം വളരെ സത്യസന്ധമായ ഒരു ആലേഖനമായി ആ പുസ്തകം മാറുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതൊരു കേവലമൊരു വ്യക്തി ഇ കെ ജാനകി അമ്മ എന്നുള്ളൊരു വ്യക്തിയുടെ ജീവചരിത്രത്തിൽ മാത്രം ഒതുങ്ങുന്നതല്ല ഒരുപാട് ജീവചരിത്രങ്ങളുടെ ഒരു വലിയ ഒരു 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 സംഘാതമാണ് ഒരു ഒരു കൂടിച്ചേരലാണ് അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു വളരെ വളരെ പ്രത്യേകതകൾ നിറഞ്ഞ ഒരു പുസ്തകം എന്നുള്ള നിലയിൽ ഒരു മൈൽ സ്റ്റോൺ എന്നുള്ള നിലയിൽ പറയാവുന്ന ഒരു പുസ്തകം എന്നുള്ള നിലയിൽ ഈ ഈ ക്രോമസോം വുമൺ നൊമാഡ് സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് എന്ന ഈ പുസ്തകം പ്രാധാന്യം നേടിയിരിക്കുകയാണ് തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും അതേക്കുറിച്ച് അറിയുന്നതിനായിട്ട് നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പിൽ സാവിത്രി പ്രീത നായറുണ്ട് നമസ്കാരം നമുക്ക് സംസാരിക്കേണ്ടത് ഈ ഒരു യാദൃശ്ചികമായ കണ്ടെത്തലിൽ നിന്ന് ഈ പുസ്തകം വരെ എത്തുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു അന്വേഷണത്തിൻ്റെ ആ ഒരു പ്രോസസ്സ് എങ്ങനെയായിരുന്നു അത് എങ്ങനെയാണത് ഉൾക്കൊണ്ടത് അത് എങ്ങനെയാണ് അതിലൂടെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് കടന്നു പോയത് എന്നുള്ളതിൻ്റെ വളരെ വ്യക്തിപരമായിട്ടുള്ള ചില ഇമ്പ്രഷൻസ് ഒന്ന് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് നമ്മൾ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് Uh, it has been certainly the 20 years that have uh, gone into the making of this book i would say it isn't that i was spending every hour of the day on this book i was doing other books as well i was working on other themes within the history of science 
but Janaki has been uh, I have been cohabiting with her if I if I could put it that way she's been she's been with me day in and day out you know I would go to sleep with her I would she was always there in the unconscious and I think I you know speaking very very personally personally speaking I would um, say that there's a lot that goes on in the unconscious that I just sort of put them somewhere in the recesses of the unconscious so much so that I work on several projects at the same time but I think each of them has a recess of its own and each of these sort of as I go through the day or the night as you lucidly dream as well I'm I'm always these these different themes or subjects that are working in the mind and perhaps also translating into a paper or two uh, they're all working at the same time so called so so as well uh, janaki so um, there is a kind of a, a continuity a kind of thread that connects my work my work on janaki with my my previous or my what shall we say coterminous subjects or books that i was i was working on so so they have never really had a big uh, sort of uh, um, a kind of difficulty in taking them all along at the same time of course that that also meant that i was not as quick in coming out with this book as i perhaps would have been had i focused on just this book but i also think i couldn't have done it that way i couldn't have really uh, brought out the janaki book and had i said look i'm going to work on the janaki book and i'm going to sit there for 5 years and work on it it wouldn't have happened because it had its organic kind of progression it had to sort of it would get stalled i would be i would be suffering from want of uh, material when it comes to understanding what exactly did she do in the 70s or what exactly did she do between the 50s and 60s there would be these huge gaps that i would sort of keep gaping at me and i i knew i didn't have anything i didn't know where she was she was lost during those periods and i also felt that she was a very formidable figure you know i i never felt comfortable being in her presence because i i always felt unequal to to trying to figure out how she thought how she lived i always felt her much larger a figure than i could sort of palate i could understand until a point where i felt i felt i had i i was i could perhaps say a thing or two about how janaki thought and where she wanted to go with respect to her her evolutionary ideas that she wanted to explore and which she didn't explore fully but i felt that i had come to understand a bit of that and i think i could not have i cannot and no biographer can i think totally understand a person's mind and the subject's mind the biography's mind it's not possible it's not possible to um sort of uh, write about every hour of the person's life not possible so you've got to sort of make some choices a lot of it depends on material so speaking about material so this material is something that's so magical i would think that i am like a sleuth or like like a forensic you know kind of a detective or a kind of uh, a forensic approach has been so important in in trying to find material because most of the time it's it's just because you don't know where to look it isn't a paucity of material it isn't and i think the most challenging of lives you can if you really know how to look and it is not about some private papers kept beautifully cataloged in some you know world class library which they do which they do but i think that a lot of it is on it's like art i mean it's like you have to have those forensic eyes you've got to really know where to look if something is not there you can even will the material 
I have literally experienced that, that willing of material. So that, ca that case happened with, uh, just taking of a, a concrete example from my work with Janaki on work, the archival material with respect to Janaki, is Bartlett's correspondence with Janaki, H.H. H. Bartlett, who was her mentor, who was a kind of muse to her, who was, a, who was an inspiration to Janaki, who was her teacher at the University of Michigan, who was an inspiring figure for Janaki. And she wanted to be like him. She wanted to be um, a nomad like him. She wanted to be somebody who, she, she fell in love with anthropology because of Bartlett. But of course, she already had this, this love kindled in her, this passion for anthropology kindled in her by her father, who she knew only when she was till, till she was 10 years old. She, she didn't get to know him in her more mature years, but, but that legacy was there. So she, with Bartlett, I knew, for instance, that there ought to be a lot more correspondence with Bartlett, given how important a figure he was in her life. But for some reason, it just wasn't turning up. It just wasn't turning up. No matter how I went, where I went to look for material, the University of Michigan, the Bentley Library, I wasn't able to really get what I wanted. And then, this is where you try your tricks, tricks of the trade, where you don't go by, you, you, get, you get more conscious about the variations in spellings, especially Asian names. So sometimes it is J A, it's just E K J Amal, or sometimes it is put under A and not J. It comes under Amal and not J. But all this is, you can guess, you can sort of guess, and I think a good historian will do these things. But what happens really, what happened to me was that. Rather than, J there are also this, this variation of the spelling J-A-N-A-K-Y has already been, also been seen. But even that is okay. I mean, you can still get that. But in this case, it's the typo that actually causes this error. So this is a human error that creeps into a catalog where instead of, a N, instead of an N for Janaki, you have a B there. So you have a Jabaki. And this is not something, and once you put in a Janaki for a search, you're never going to find a whole lot of correspondence. They would be lost forever, simply yeah. by hum a human type or human error that has crept into a catalog. And this is one of the world's, one of the finest libraries, as I say in the book. So what I did then, because I knew there ought to be more of a correspondence with Bartlett, I just then did for the next search, I just did E K or forget E K. I did j just did J A because J A there will never be two ways about it, and I found it. <laughs> and literally, I I almost willed it because I knew it ought to be there. I knew she would have discussed these things with him. So that's that's calling for something extra. And when I say extra, I'm speaking of something more forensic. Some of these telltale traces that people leave behind. No matter what, they will leave behind these traces. And I think it's your ingenuity is in actually seeing these traces, seeing these telltale signs of somebody having lived or done something. So that kind of approach is what um, I was able to make this book simply by that kind of an approach. Okay. Um, Vishayang, very bad chitla, I think, very adapted to the Vishayang on the psychogenetics, plant breeding. You pin, I'm going to already with this to my biological sciences, it's a never let a Vividimula reward Vishayang, a very deeply the trend. The Nella, India, and the Tula, the Vanilla Shastra, Nedil, Shastra Pradivagal, a tomb, Prathana Petta, a tomb, Prathana Petta, Stana Mahikina. Vitiana, 
അവർ അർഹിക്കുന്ന സ്ഥാനമാന അർഹിക്കുന്ന അംഗീകാരങ്ങൾ പലപ്പോഴും അവരുടെ ഗവേഷണ പ്രയത്നങ്ങൾക്ക് കിട്ടാതെ പോവുകയും ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും അത് വളരെ വ്യക്തമായി ഈ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ ഹൈലൈറ്റ് ചെയ്യപ്പെട്ടിട്ടുണ്ട് അതെന്തുകൊണ്ട് ഇപ്പോൾ പുരുഷ മേധാവിത്വമുള്ള ഒരു ലോകത്ത് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ശാസ്ത്ര രംഗത്ത് അത് നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടിലായാലും വിദേശത്താണെങ്കിലും ഒക്കെ തന്നെ പുരുഷ മേധാവിത്വം കൊടിയുത്തി വാഴുന്ന ഒരു കാലത്ത് അതോടൊപ്പം തന്നെ ഇപ്പോൾ ഇന്ത്യയിലാണെങ്കിൽ ബ്രാഹ്മണ മേധാവിത്വവും അതിൻ്റെ കൂടെയുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇതൊക്കെ വരുന്ന സമയത്ത് ഒരു ഈഴവ സമുദായത്തിൽ നിന്ന് വരുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു സ്ത്രീ നേരിടേണ്ടി വരുന്ന വിവേചനങ്ങൾ വളരെ വളരെ വലുതാണ് അപ്പോൾ അവരുടെ അറിവിനെ ഒക്കെ തമസ്കരിക്കുന്ന രീതിയിൽ ഈ ഈ വിവേചനങ്ങൾ അവരെ കീഴ്പ്പെടുത്തുകയും അവരതിനെതിരായിട്ടൊക്കെ ഭയങ്കരമായി ഫൈറ്റ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിനെ മറികടന്നുകൊണ്ട് തൻ്റെ സ്ഥാനം ഉറപ്പിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യേണ്ട ഒരു സംഗതി വേണ്ടി വന്നു അപ്പോൾ ഇത് ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഉടനീളം ഏത് പ്രയത്നത്തിലും അവർക്ക് ഈ ഒരു പ്രശ്നം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഏത് രംഗത്ത് അവർ പ്രവർത്തിക്കേണ്ടി വന്നാലും ഈ ഒരു പ്രശ്നത്തെ അവർക്ക് നേരിടേണ്ടി വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് എപ്പോഴും അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരു ശാസ്ത്രജ്ഞ നമ്മൾ ഡോക്യുമെൻ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അവരെ ആലേഖനം ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നാം വളരെ വളരെ ശ്രദ്ധാപൂർവ്വമായ ഒരുപാട് സാമൂഹ്യമായ അടിയൊഴുക്കൾ സോഷ്യൽ അണ്ടർ കറൻസ് ഒരുപാട് അതിനകത്ത് പറയേണ്ടി വരും അപ്പോൾ ഇതൊക്കെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഇതിലേക്കെല്ലാം എത്തിപ്പെട്ടത് പിന്നെ മറ്റൊരു കാര്യമുള്ളത് ഈ ഈ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ ഈ പുസ്തകം ഒരു നോവൽ പോലെ അനായാസേന വായിച്ചു പോകാവുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു വായനാസുഖമുള്ള ഒരു പുസ്തകമാണ് അത് ഗഹനമായ വിഷയങ്ങൾ ആവിഷ്കരിച്ചിട്ട് പോലും ശാസ്ത്രീയ വിഷയങ്ങൾ ആവിഷ്കരിക്കുമ്പോൾ വളരെ ഡീപ്പായിട്ട് അതിൻ്റെ എലിമെൻ്ററി കാര്യങ്ങളിലേക്ക് ആ ബേസിക്കായിട്ടുള്ള അടിസ്ഥാനപരമായ കാര്യങ്ങളിലേക്ക് പോവുകയും ഏതൊരു പുതിയൊരാൾക്കും അതെന്താണ് എന്ന് വ്യക്തമാകത്തക്ക രീതിയിൽ വളരെ വ്യക്ത ക്ലിയറായ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് കൊടുക്കുകയും ക്ലാരിറ്റിയോട് കൂടി എഴുതുകയും ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഈ വിഷയങ്ങളൊക്കെ പഠിച്ചെടുത്തത് തികച്ചും അപരിചിത ചില വിഷയങ്ങളൊക്കെ തികച്ചും അപരിചിതമായിരിക്കാം പക്ഷേ എന്നാലും അതൊക്കെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഇത്ര ആഴത്തിൽ പഠിച്ചെടുത്തത് എന്നൊന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു how do you how do you really um you know sort of pick up the indicators of uh, a patriarchal relationship a lingala or patriarchal or 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 this kind of a discriminatory experience from correspondence for example this is the nature of Commu- see we we've got to rely on archival material we can't just say oh she was um a victim of patriarchy or she experienced patriarchy in various forms this it's not enough to just to say that because she was a woman it's not enough to say that we've got to actually show that look there was a very clear uh, experience of uh, this kind of a discrimination a gender discrimination against her or a caste based discrimination against her it's not always that you can find material which you can sort of substantiate these things but luckily for janaki one we know that janaki is very articulate some people some of them some scientists are really or some some biographies or some subjects are not articulate they may not they may be very good with their work but they may not really express feelings as beautifully as janaki did she had a literary flair as well and she she communicated her inner feelings with her closest ones not otherwise she was pretty reserved otherwise and she was very dignified and she never really she was no than she fundamentally she was no activist in her outlook so her outlook was such that even when you face these things it's not about to go out and sort of shout out these issues her way of dealing with is to either as she as i say it in this book as she herself says it in this book i want to run away into these sanctuaries or to these the western ghat forests for this is one way what i call it the you know opening a line of flight 
So this is not an escape act. This is not a fight or flight kind of response. But this is this is not an escape act. But this is actually saying, look, I don't want to waste time over these things. Let me show it and do it and deal with it by producing good work. This is something so important to her because fundamentally she knows it's my work that will survive me. So even with the silent value, Ish Valley issue, it wasn't her becoming an eco-warrior of sort, of some kind of a soft feminism or some kind of an eco-feminism or any of those sort of things which we think or, or kind of romantic notion. Say you have a Sugata Kumari, the poet in nature and all of the kind of thing that we, we constantly invoke that figure when we talk of the Silent Wali campaign, for example, or nature. We immediately invoke Sugata Kumari. But here is a concrete, a scientist who's actually trying to understand this issue from the scientist's point of view. And she is also a woman. But we, there is this, this narrative, the Silent Valley narrative does not have another woman figure. You only have Sridhar Umayri. It's high time that we start looking at things differently. We, it is, or a Vandana Shiva, we're not talking about some kind of eco-warriors. She dealt with her issues and problems, whether it is a caste-based, gender-based discrimination or discrimination through patriarchy. You have her, 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 her Brahminical bosses or people sitting you know, in regimental settings and dictating terms to her, 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 her reaction or the way she responded to these things was not about an engaging in an open fight, as it were, but to actually transform that or translate that into something very creative, very useful. So that included running away on collecting tours was one indication that she wants to go away from a space which was not letting her work. Fundamentally, she wanted to be left in some quiet to work, which we all, I think, understand so beautifully. Just give me some quiet. You know, this bureaucracy and everything else, just please, I want a break. So she opens her lines of flight. She will go where it is that she want to go to run away from these things, but not run away, as I said, as an escape act, but as a different way, an alternative way of dealing with these issues. And she would very clearly, as I said, she was so articulate, so communicative, that she would write to her close friends. If you look at all the correspondence with her closest people, including the British cytogeneticist Cyril Darlington, or talking about her Michigan mentor Bartlett, or talking about her wonderful women friends, very close women friends. She had this wonderful sisterhood that she, she developed. And she believed in that sisterhood. So that building up a kind of informal sisterhood was again a way of dealing with this patriarchy that each of these women were facing. So when they came together, like you saw in the Ukirk thing, in Trivandrum, which she goes and spends time in. Actually, I mean, what a place Trivandrum was. Oh, what is Trivandrum today? And what is India today? I mean, you, the, the kind of women who lived and worked and who, who self-actualized, who actually did things with their lives, such meaningful things with their lives, you, you really wonder if it's a great, you know, age of regression that we are passing through. Yeah, yeah, true. So you have Janaki, you have Trivandrum, which is such a different place in the 1930s, early 1930s. You've got the great slump, you've got the recession hitting hard, and you have people like Ukirk who can't find a job after a Cambridge uh, degree. You have someone like Janaki who's come back after her doctoral degree uh, from Michigan. She's here and she's the All India Women's Conference is on at the Queen Mary's College. The Queen Mary's College becomes this wonderful hub for building up a sisterhood, a sorority of sort, to build up a network of friends. So Ukirk already knows Queen Mary's is a ferment, is, is, is a place where you have interesting women coming from there. So, so you have got something very academic going on. People, women who are actually doing things uh, very courageously, bravely. It's as if men didn't exist in Queen Mary's is a women's place. The same with the Women's Christian College Madras. 
We've never studied these two institutions as, this, as, as great markers in history, 20th century history, where women had such a free reign there because they taught themselves. You had women faculty members, you had women students, together did science. Of course, other things too, but I'm talking of science, the focus here being on science. So when U Kirk is already taking up this job offered by the princely state, the princely state itself was enlightened then with, with an with a enlightened woman figure heading the princely state when it came to, came to education. So U Kirk has been offered a job. Here she doesn't get a job in England. So she is brave enough to come and take up this uh, job at, in Travancore State. It's the same time that Janaki also comes. So Uka is already knowing. She already is, is, is expecting. Uh, she gets news that Janaki is now going to come to Trivandrum. And here is, she says, the, the, the fresh, with Janaki comes the fresh air of Queen Mary's. So they all get together. Then you find so many other women. You've got... So Sir John, you've got other modern literature like So Sir John, you've got um, Mercy Janet, you've got several others who already have been to Madras, who've already studied in Madras, and they've found employment in the Women's College, Trivandrum, Janaki being the only one in the Maharaja's College of Science. So all of them together decide to form a kind of informal sisterhood there. So. Um, Janaki would buy herself a car and, you know, Ukirk is around and Ukirk is this white figure. Th there is no caste there, there is no race there. They just, they just recognize each other as women and that, and that it was important to come together, to empower each other. We exactly. need to come together and fight this place. So, it, so this, this power that they got from the sisterhood was quite amazing. So coming to talking about patriarchy, so ways of dealing with it. Sisterhood is one such. And then talking about how beautifully Janaki articulates these with her women friends, with her close male friends. She's able to very clearly say, I don't want to sit under Venkatraman's thumb all my life. I don't want, or, or the agricultural department in India is infested with Brahmins, you know? And she knows she just, being a woman or trying to do unorthodox science, which is that of look, doing, looking at not just morphology, but actually doing a kind of chromosome investigations of plants in order to do taxonomy through a chromosomal basis of, of taxonomy. A, a breeding institution, which is the usual place where jobs or employment could be found for women like Janet, like like the site of Janet is Janaki. Do not, she's an academic site of geneticist, and a breeding station is more interested in economic biology, is interested in people like breeders, master breeders like T. S. Venkatraman, the sure cane breeder, or K. Ramaya, or you know, so many others, maize breeders and other breeders. So the the the, the breeder is the person that's important. And what does the breeder, why, does, should, why should the sugarcane breeding institution or the breeder really need some academic chromosomal investigation or analysis or, you know, evolution of the sugarcane or these things are non-issues for them. They would, so for Venkatraman, these things should be cons confined to the universities or simply should be at the margins of, of, of the breeding station. It really doesn't fit in. So that's where, again, you have Janaki getting upset that her papers are not being published. Or, uh, look, here is this Brahmin who is not allowing me. Here is this man. Who, and there the man doesn't matter if it's a white man or a brown mm. man or whoever. I'm this woman. I'm my, my papers are being sort of filed away and not being sent to uh, for publication. Because every, every time she needs permission from the state in order to be able to publish. Mm, Janaki also mentions that India is not a place for doing yeah, good science. That's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, she, she, she's very upset by the time that yeah, yeah. Uh, in the late 30s. So that's the major uh, time, major decision time when she decides to become an exile. She doesn't want a job. She says, I don't want any money. It's not money that matters. I want to have the freedom to do my work, oh. my research. So regimented settings. Yeah is not what Janaki wants. At the same time, they are the only, the state, 
institutions, the only institutions which can absorb someone like us. So it's, it's like all of us, you know, we, we need a livelihood, we need some money to live, but you also want freedom. So how do you do that? So there, that's where you get creative. That's where you start opening up a space which will help you straddle these two needs, you know. Maybe even a kind of what is when a prider de work in a tom important idea. Maybe independent researcher na la ni dille. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can pursue your own, I mean, area of interest. I'm absolutely glad you mentioned this because I, I, the kind of empathy I had with my subject, with my biographies, is immense because. I think I have had this kind of a wandering um, journey myself. When I say wandering, it's wandering where it wasn't ever the case of finding a livelihood. I, I would have been a misfit. In fact, I, I think I believe I'm pretty unemployable in that sense because I am not going to be in one in one discipline or that's what you need when you've got to teach in some department you see and i i have never studied history in that sense formally i have not i have studied other <laughs> and you would have so been asked this where, where difficult question that what uh, what is the qualification that you have for i i i would have I, I didn't do history of science as a as a discipline so what did i study i studied so many other things so so I'm unemployable from, from this very yeah. mainstream sense. Now with Janaki, I, I could empathize, deeply empathize the, the pathos that she was going through when she said, everybody else is happy, I've got this job, but that means like I'm going to be in confines, I'm going to be confined, I'm going to be in fetters, though I get money. What's, what good is money if I'm in fetters? <laughs> Can I do some work? Now, she, she goes into teaching. She's, she's, she's the first woman professor of the Travancore State at the Maharaja's College of Science. And um, she decides, okay, I'm going to have a great time anyway. Because uh, teaching, you know, is not really my thing. But I'm having to teach because I need a job. I don't know what else to do now. I don't know what to do with myself. She keeps saying this. So she is then decides, you know, she, she's, she's a very social person. She loves friends. She loves building friendships. And she's such a loyal person. She keeps these friends throughout her life. Yeah. They're always strong. They're all fast friends. And she builds this network of friends. And that's where they went there anger at society and you know all this patriarchy and all of them and they all get together so Trivandrum becomes something else for them and that's when Gandhi visits 1934 and when Gandhi visits you have uh, she, she, like I said she she's never met Gandhi before but she was very inspired by Gandhi when she you know for the first time uh, heard him speak in Madras during her early days at the Queen Mary's um, after that, she never saw him when she went to uh, London, uh, the round table conference he was visiting and all that, but she, she never got to meet him. But she meets him there in Trivandrum. And this is something I, even just the previous day of my sending my manuscript, material was, you know, was just sort of coming to me. And the Gandhi visit and the fact that she actually met him. I only knew just a few days before the manuscript was sent away. <laughs> you know, so material just, it just sort of in starts, in fits and starts. Never will it sort of just appear. Even today, after the book is done, <laughs> I found material. Yeah. So that will go on, but of course yeah. you have to be practical and finish it yeah. off at some point. Sure. You can always do another thing, you know, you know, you can always, but I don't think I can ever write a biography anymore. And I, I, I biography of this nature will never, I can't get a different, I can't get a better subject. I don't know if such a better, a better oh, person exists really, that you can write such a long life so full of events and how exciting her mind was. Yeah, yeah.